Hi, I'm Brittany Lung, and I would like to welcome you to this episode of Race Face Spotlight. Today, we're excited to have IMSA Michelin Pilot Challenge driver, Brian Henderson with us. Brian, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing great, how are you doing? I'm doing great, thank you so much for joining us. Brian, you started racing at the age of five and won your first karting championship at the age of six. From 2005 to 2012, you competed in both the WKA Virginia Dirt Karting Association, among others. How did karting racing prepare you for what you're doing today? I would say the biggest two things that I could get out of kart racing that's still relative for what I'm doing now would be just the pure competition of it. Uh, back when I was kart racing, we would have the whole top 10 qualifying within a tenth of a second. So that it was really competitive and it still is now, obviously. Also, um, I learned how to be smooth behind the wheel. Karting is kind of like momentum racing. You really have to be smooth and the smoother you are behind a car, the more speed you'll get out of it. So those are the biggest two things that I took away from karting. All great lessons learned. And at this point, you've raced a variety of different cars in different series, including NASCAR Wheel and All-American Late Model, NASCAR Canon Pro Series, and the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Can you share with viewers how that progression took place? Yeah, definitely. So... Um, when I was about 15 years old, I had been racing carts for close to 10 years, so I knew I was ready for the next step. I wanted to move up and get into some cars, so luckily we knew a few really good people in the community. Uh, one was Timmy Tyrell with Convenience Tire and Auto. He actually gave us uh, my first Spec Miata car and got us hooked up with that and taught us all about that and got us going. And then Jerry and Brandon Brown with Brandon Built Motorsports kind of got us into late model racing. So I kind of went down uh, two different paths at the same time, uh, circle track stuff and road racing. And as I got more experience in both, uh, it, it just helped me all around as a driver. I was able to get my K&N license, then I got approved to run some Xfinity stuff again with Brandon Bill Motorsports and then um, in the road racing side of things I got different road racing licenses, ran some Pro World Challenge, Global MX5 Cup and now I'm in IMSA so that's kind of how that all played out. Now you said you're currently racing in the IMSA Michelin Pilot Challenge Series. Can you tell us a little bit about that series in particular? Yeah, so uh, the IMSA Michelin Pilot Challenge is a supporting series of the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. And in the IMPC series, there's two classes, so it's kind of interclass racing. There's GS and TCR, and I run in TCR. Um, the season goes from like January to October, and there's 10 races. We go to some of the coolest racetracks in the U.S. and one in Canada, too. Now, you are currently driving a Honda Civic Type R, but I'm guessing it's not the typical Honda Civic that I got when I was 16 years old. Can you share with us some of the things that you have done to turn this into a full-blown race car? Yeah, so the awesome thing about these cars is that they're true factory-built race cars. So all the Honda Civic Type Rs that are raced in TCR are built by Yas Motorsports over in Italy. And the main things that they do is is just modify the cars for safety, like roll cage, fuel cells, and other stuff like that. What kind of adjustments as a driver did you have to make to race a front wheel drive car? So you might be surprised. I would say there honestly isn't that much of a difference when everything is going good, you're on track, um, and the car is handling good. There's not that much of a difference you have to do as a driver. but. When things start to get out of hand, if you get sideways, a little bit of slip angle, anything like that, you definitely want to keep your foot in the throttle as opposed to letting off because you'll keep going in the right direction. You currently race for Atlanta Speedworks. Can you tell us about that association and your relationship with Todd Lamb? Yeah, we love running with the guys at Atlanta Speedworks. Uh, we chose to run with them in Global MX5 Cup for our 2018 season. And everything went so well. We love working with the team and Todd that we kind of both chose to work together again for 2019 and move up to IMSA. Um, Todd is a great driver and driver's coach. He's really helped me uh, all the way around as a driver. And the team works incredibly hard. Every time we hit the track, we have a fast car, and I just love working with them. 
Can you give us a recap of this year's IMSA racing? Yeah, so going into this year, uh, there was a lot to learn. I was a new driver to IMSA, the series. Our team was new to the series, too, so it was a lot happening all at once. But overall, I'm really happy and proud of our performance throughout the year. Uh, We were fast at almost every track. We qualified up front. We led a lot in in, in a lot of the races, and uh, it was just a really good year overall. I was definitely hoping to finish higher than fifth at the beginning of the year, but um, considering all the great competition, I thought we did a really good job. You also do some spec Miata racing. How does that fit into your very busy schedule? Yeah, so I love spec Miata racing. It's tough. It was tough to fit into the schedule this year, definitely with all the IMSA stuff. But um, I love going back and seeing all the guys that helped me learn racecraft when I was just first learning and uh, racing with all them. It's just a really good time. Now, sometimes you compete against your dad in the Spec Miata series. How has that worked out so far? It's worked out pretty good so far. I love that I get to share this passion with my dad. It's something that's really special to both of us. And um, most of the time, we both kind of learn different things while we're out there and talk about it and help each other. and, And it works out really well. Brian, you recently graduated from the University of North Carolina at Charlotte, and I'm sure that trying to race and attend college at the same time has had its challenges. Do you have any advice for other young drivers trying to do the very same thing? Yeah, it was definitely tough at times. I would say my best piece of advice would be to talk to your instructors and your professors at the beginning of each semester. Um, they're usually pretty flexible. There's always a few that aren't, but a lot of them love to hear about racing and learn about it. And uh, definitely don't skip class. That's great advice. You've been very involved with the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation and have had an amazing adoption at the NASCAR Hall of Fame earlier this year. What does it mean to you to be able to give back to such a worthy cause? It's really incredible. Um, I definitely didn't see this coming when I was younger, uh, being able to work with a a charity like this, but um, meeting Aiden and just working with everyone, um, Dennis and Jacqueline and everyone at the charity, it's just really awesome and it's so cool that I can help make a difference. Can you share with us your plans for 2020? Yeah, so as of right now, we're planning on doing the same thing, running IMSA again for 2020. So if we were to look into a crystal ball, so to say, where would you see yourself in the next five years? I hope to be competing in the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship in five years or less. Tell us something that most people wouldn't know about you. Uh, Most people probably don't know that I'm vegan. Okay. Brian, what do you do when you're not racing? Uh, I really like to spend time with friends and family. That's definitely the most important thing to me. Other than that, I really enjoy being active, uh, mountain biking, hiking, just adventuring in general. Um, And as of recently, I've been doing a lot more yoga, too. Awesome. Uh, Brian, we're almost about out of time. Would you like to give a shout out to your sponsors? Yeah, I'd love to send a big thank you to uh, BDL Motorsports, Henderson Construction Company, and Friends of Jacqueline Foundation for their support throughout the year. Without them, uh, I wouldn't be racing, so really thankful for that. Brian, thank you so much for being on the show. We look forward to following you closely in 2020 and wish you the best of luck. You can learn more about Brian by checking him out at brianhendersonracing.com. Follow him on social media. Don't forget, if you want to catch up on any of the Race Face Spotlight shows, you can do so at raceface.tv on demand. Until next time, I'm Brittany Lung, and thank you for watching.